It's another Q&A edition of Optimal Health Daily, episode 310, and I'm Dr. Neil Malik. Hey there, happy Friday. Welcome to another Q&A edition of Optimal Health Daily. This is where I answer your health questions related to fitness, diet and nutrition, and lots more. You send in the questions and I answer them for you. Now, before we get into it, a big thank you to Talkspace for sponsoring this episode. Talkspace is an online therapy company that makes therapy affordable, confidential, and convenient. And they let you choose from over 1,500 licensed therapists. For a special offer just for you, come by Talkspace.com slash OHD. That's Talkspace.com slash OHD. Now, why should you bother sending me a question? Well, I want this to be a space where you can expect to hear the truth. I want you to be able to come here and get a fairly unbiased perspective. And I always try to base my responses on what the actual data, what the research is saying, and not just old research, but current research, well-designed studies. Luckily, my job requires that I stay current. I'm an assistant professor and department chair at Bastyr University in San Diego, California. I'm also a registered dietitian nutritionist and a certified personal trainer, a certified exercise physiologist, same thing in my case. And to be honest, I've hit the panic button as our fall quarter starts on Monday. I better get cracking. So let me jump right into today's question as we optimize your life. Hi, my name's Jennifer. I have a question about branch chain amino acids. I feel like I've heard a lot about them lately. Um, in my fitness world that I'm in, and I am just curious as to what are they? Is it something I'm supposed to be, should be taking? Are they good for me? And what are they supposed to help with? If you could answer that, that would be great. Thanks. I love the show, and the Friday Q&As are my favorite. Thanks again. Thank you for your question, Jennifer. And I'm so glad you enjoyed the Friday Q&A episodes. They're my favorite too. Now, your question was about branched-chain amino acids, which I will abbreviate kind of from here on out as BCAAs. And in typical Dr. Neil fashion, I'll start from the beginning, just to make sure we all understand what BCAAs are, then I'll get into whether they're useful or not. Now, a couple of weeks ago, in fact, when I was at the gym, I heard a couple of gentlemen discussing BCAAs. One of them was saying, dude, you've got to start taking branched-chain amino acids. They help me improve my strength so much and my partner is noticing how much more ripped I am. His buddy then asked, so which ones are you taking? He replied, I take creatine, taurine, and CLA. Well, unfortunately, this individual wasn't quite sure what branched-chain amino acids are. Creatine, for example, is not a branched-chain amino acid. Taurine isn't either. And CLA, which is conjugated linoleic acid, is actually a fat. So let's start by defining what BCAAs are. The branched chain amino acids include proteins that the body cannot create on its own. Our bodies are normally pretty good at mixing and matching the proteins in some of the foods we eat to support optimal growth and development. But there are some proteins the body cannot make on its own. These include specific proteins called leucine, isoleucine, and valine. These three amino acids or proteins, same thing, are types of branched-chain amino acids, or BCAAs. Now, you may be wondering, why are they called branched-chain amino acids? Well, it's because if you were to look at them under a microscope, you would see that their chemical structure makes it look like they have these branches growing out from the center, or trunk, of the molecule. In fact, BCAAs make up about a third of our skeletal muscle. So not only are our muscles composed of BCAAs, but our bodies aren't able to produce them on their own. So no wonder fitness enthusiasts are talking about supplementing with this stuff. Now, those that supplement with BCAAs often believe that they are preventing muscle breakdown and improving their athletic performance. But do these things really happen? To go back to my story, the gentleman who claimed that taking these supplements was helping him get stronger and more ripped, well, could that just be the fact that there was a placebo effect where Because he was taking these supplements, he thought they were improving his performance, which made him actually improve his performance. Or maybe he started going to the gym more often or started playing around with other things in his diet. And of course, first of all, we know he wasn't really taking BCAAs. But let's say he was. 
we simply don't know whether there were other factors involved in his improved performance and possibly his improved appearance. So luckily, they've actually studied those who supplement with BCAAs. And do those things really happen? Sadly, the research is inconclusive. What I mean by that is some human studies have found that supplementing with BCAAs does prevent muscle breakdown and improve athletic performance. But other studies, not so much. Some researchers believe that it's not about the total amount of BCAAs consumed, but that in order for them to be most effective, you need the right ratio of leucine, isoleucine, and valine. The optimal ratio is still being studied, but some believe a ratio of 2 to 1 to 1, leucine, isoleucine, to valine, is best. But a few weeks back during another Q&A episode, I mentioned that some researchers are finding that consuming leucine specifically after a workout may be best. Okay, so what to do? For most, taking a BCAA supplement is relatively safe and has minimal side effects, but we still don't know what the ideal dosage is. Some think that between one to five grams of BCAAs is enough. However, when randomly testing some of these products available on the market, we're finding that some of them don't contain the amount of amino acids that they claim. Even worse, some don't have any of the branch chain varieties at all. Instead, they use fillers. So, like I always say, be sure to do your due diligence and research any and all supplements you are currently taking or are planning on taking. A great resource is consumerlab.com. Also, keep in mind that the body can only absorb about 20 grams of protein at a time. So if you're consuming more than that, especially through supplements, your body won't use it and will either excrete it through your urine or convert it to fat. But the good news is, you can also find BCAAs in many of the protein-rich foods we commonly consume. Dairy, eggs, meat, poultry, legumes, and fish. These are all great sources of BCAAs. And the added bonus is that the proteins found in these foods are often easily absorbed and utilized by the body. And a big thanks again to my sponsor for today's episode, Talkspace. We all need to take better care of ourselves and our mental health is no exception. That's why today's sponsor, Talkspace, the online therapy company, makes it easy to connect with an experienced licensed therapist that you pick based on your preferences and for a fraction of the price of traditional therapy. You can send your therapist text, audio, or video messages or do a live video chat. Talkspace therapists are fully licensed and go through a rigorous screening process in addition to thousands of hours of supervised professional training. To match you with your perfect therapist, come by Talkspace.com slash OHD. As a special offer for our listeners, you can use the coupon code OHD to get $30 off your first month, all while showing support for this podcast. That's the coupon code OHD and Talkspace.com slash OHD. Talkspace, therapy for how we live today. Thank you again for the question, Jennifer. You'll be entered into a very small raffle every month to win a book. And if you want to be in the raffle, send me a question. Just come by oldpodcast.com. There's a red bar along the side of the page that you can click on and record right from your computer's microphone. It's really easy, and you can even play back your message and do retakes before sending it in. Or you can do it the old-fashioned way and call in. The number is 61 I love ohd Both methods are in this episode's description that you can find at oldpodcast.com. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Thank you for listening every day and all the way through. I'll see you back here on Monday where I might sound a little bit more frantic because the fall quarter has started, but it is still where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. 
Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift, as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.